Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 24 of the chapter Organic Chemistry, Some Basic Principles and Techniques. We were doing some fundamental concepts in organic reaction mechanism in the past few videos. Moving on with the next fundamental concept, in this video I'm going to be telling you about inductive effect. Do you know when two atoms form a covalent bond? That is, how is a covalent bond formed? By the sharing of a pair of electrons. Both the atoms, for example, you have this carbon and this carbon. The two carbons are, have a covalent bond between them. Then both the carbons contribute one electron each, which is shared equally by both of them. This shared pair of electrons between the two carbons is holding them together. And that is why it is called a bond, because there is no actual tie there. They are just a shared pair of electrons and since they are sharing this pair of electrons that is shown by a line which represents a chemical bond or a covalent bond. Now these were two carbon atoms which had the same electronegativity. In other words, they have the same tendency to pull electrons towards itself. Therefore, the bond formed between the two carbon atoms will be a very balanced bond. It is like a tug of war, you know. They are two opponents and both of them have the same energy or the say if they have the same strength, then what will happen? The rope would neither move to that person nor to this and a balance will be created. But if one of the opponents in a tug of war is stronger or has a stronger tendency to pull the rope towards itself, then it will pull the rope more towards itself and the other person who is weaker will have to let go of the rope. It will move away from him while the one who is stronger will pull the rope closer to him. So an imbalance is created. In the case of atoms, when they have a covalent bond, if the two atoms are different, they are not of the same element, then the electronegativities of all atoms or all elements is different. So when you have two atoms which are of different elements and they are combined by a covalent bond, there is bound to be an electronegativity difference between them. One of them will be more electronegative and the other one will be less electronegative. If the electronegativity difference is not much, then you can ignore the effect. You know, if the energy difference between me and the other person is not much, then the tug of war would still not be affected. But if the opponent or my energy, the, the difference between our energies is far greater, then the more pronounced the, dif the difference would be or in a what do you call an arm wrestling match. If you have an opponent in an arm wrestling match where both of them have equal strengths, you will find them struggling in the middle. But if the opponent is really weak, then it's a slam dunk. It just goes down. That's because the stronger person can easily put the has far more energy to pull the other person's hand. So when you have an atom in a covalent bond, when they are two different elements and their electronegativity difference is great. In other words, one of them is more, far more electronegative than the other one. In that situation, a great imbalance is created, like in the arm wrestling. Now in this molecule, take a look. This is, what, what is this? It is chloropropane. Right? So chlorine is attached to this carbon here and chlorine is far more electronegative than carbon. So this covalent bond acquires an imbalance and this imbalance, what kind of an imbalance would it be? The chlorine would have a tendency to pull the shared pair of electrons towards itself. Since chlorine has this tendency to pull the shared pair of electrons towards itself, it being more electronegative, it will become, since now the negative charge, electrons are negatively charged, if they are more towards chlorine, the chlorine atom would acquire a partial negative charge. It will not be a proper negative charge because a proper negative charge would be if it completely takes away the electron of the other atom. It's not completely taking it, it's only pulling it a little towards itself, which makes it partially negatively charged. That partial negative charge is shown by a small letter delta. Delta negative. That there is a delta means small, partial, and negative is means the negative charge. So chlorine acquires a partial negative charge at the same time, the carbon who has lost its electron partially acquires a partial positive charge. So what happens here? A polarity is created in the molecule. 
Now, since this polarity is created in the molecule, the fluorine has become partially negatively charged and the adjacent atom to which it is connected through a covalent bond has become partially positively charged. Now, the two carbons that I spoke of were of equal electronegativity and therefore they were contributing equally to the bond and in the tug of war, none of them were stronger or weaker. But the moment chlorine pulled away the electrons from this carbon and this carbon became partially positively charged, then these two carbons do not remain the same. In comparison to this carbon now, this is positive, therefore this is kind of negative at that time, in that moment. The moment chlorine pulled the electrons towards itself and it became partially negatively charged, this carbon became partially positively charged and in comparison to this carbon, this carbon is negatively charged and you know, uh, atoms or in chemistry, all uh, atoms or species, they are really very uh, big hearted. They really help out if there is uh, an imbalance of charges, they always try to balance the charges. So what happens, this carbon realizes that the carbon, this the adjacent carbon has become electron deficient because its electron has been pulled away by chlorine. So it offers to help. And how does it offer to help? By giving it a little bit of its electron. But the electron negativity difference between these two carbons is not as much as was between chlorine and carbon. So this, although the electronegative, it has become electronegative due to this. But this electronegativity is kind of not as much as chlorine and this difference is not as much. Therefore, this carbon pushes its electrons a little towards this carbon, the uh, electronegative, the, the carbon that has become electronegative due to this chlorine. And this acquires a even lesser partially positive charge. So partial positive charge and even partial of that partial. So we say a double delta positive charge. In comparison to this carbon, this becomes even lesser positive. Then the next carbon comes in to help. Oh my God, you become positive? I'll help you out. Take a little of my electron. And, but again, the difference between these two is even lesser and therefore this becomes delta, delta, delta. You see three deltas, partial of partial of partial positive charge. So what have we seen? By the presence of one electronegative atom in the molecule, the rest of the, the next atom becomes partially positively charged due to the, uh, the polarity that is created. And this polarity that is created does not end with this atom. It is carried over in the molecule to the next atoms also. So it is carried over to the next carbon and it is carried over to the next carbon. And it has been seen after three atoms, after three bonds, this uh, attraction, the, the fourth carbon, let us say if this was uh, chlorobutane, then the fourth carbon would not have been able, the difference between the two would not have been enough to actually cause any polarity. So this polarity is, effect, is formed up to three stages. Beyond that, it does not happen. And this creation of polarity and its propagation in the entire chain is known as inductive effect. Why inductive? Because the chlorine induced a positive charge in this carbon and this positively charged carbon induced a positive charge in the next carbon which further induced a, an even more partial positive charge in the next carbon. That is why since this effect is being induced in the neighboring atoms, it is known as inductive effect. So let me, let me read. The polarization, that is polarization, what does it mean? Formation of separation of positive and negative charges is known as polarization, that the two poles have been created, the positive pole and the negative pole. Chlorine is forming the negative pole and this carbon is forming the positive pole. The polarization of a sigma bond, sigma bond is the first bond between two carbon atoms, caused by the polarization of the adjacent sigma bond. This was polarized and the inductive effect was created here because the next bond was also polarized. Of the adjacent sigma, sigma bond is referred to as the inductive effect. That 
the polarization is created in the first step but the polarization creates further polarization in the next bonds and therefore it is known as inductive effect. A covalent fo bond formed between atoms of different electronegativities like carbon and chlorine, a covalent bond formed between atoms of different electronegativities leads to polarization. You've understood that, that it leads to the separation of charges, that is this becomes negative, this becomes positive, which induces it in the adjacent bonds and therefore it is known as inductive effect. The inductive effect becomes vanishingly small after three bonds. After three bonds, it is almost vanishingly small means it's almost not there. Something that vanishes means poof, it's no more there. So the difference between this, the third carbon and the fourth carbon would be so, the difference between their electronegativities would be so little that it would not actually cause inductive effect. So inductive effect can be carried up to three bonds, right? Now, inductive effect can be, polarization should be created. Polarization could be, if this is electronegative in comparison to carbon, then this became partially negatively charged. If we had a species here, which is, uh, instead of being, uh, now this is, chlorine is electron withdrawing, being electronegative, it means it is withdrawing the electron, just pulling the electrons towards itself. If you had a species that was electron donating, or if a group that pushes electrons away from itself, for example, a metallic atom. So what kind of inductive effect would that have? If you, let us say, had magnesium here. So this would have an effect on it that this would be positively charged because it is, excuse me. So if we have an electron donating species here, then the polarity would still be created, but this would become partially positively charged and the carbon would become partially negatively charged and the inductive effect would be due to would be of the negative charge that is this would be partially negatively charged the next carbon would be doubly partially partially of partial negative charge and the third would be delta 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 negative right so the induction is taking can take place of both the charges positive and negative charge so you can have Electron withdrawing groups would cause inductive effect in would cause inductive effect. Electron withdrawing groups like chlorine that are electronegative would create induction of positive charge. And electron donating groups, that is groups which push electrons towards the chain, they would cause the induction of negative charge. So electron withdrawing groups, examples of electron withdrawing groups are the nitro group, the cyanide group the carboxylic acid group, the ester group, the aryloxy, that is for example phenoxy group, all these are electron withdrawing groups, that is they will create negative charge. They would pull electrons towards themselves and create a negative charge. The polarity would be that they would have negative charge and the carbon would have positive charge and the induction would be of the positive charge. Electron donating groups on the other hand, for example, methyl, ethyl, they are electron donating. They kind of push electrons away from themselves. Therefore, in that case, the induction would be of the negative charge. Now here, I would like to um, repeat something that I did in the previous video. I was discussing the electron displacement effects in covalent bonds and I told you whenever a species that has an electron negativity difference is present within the molecule it causes polarity in the molecule and this polarity that is created is permanent you remember just in the if you do not remember what i'm telling you i would encourage you to watch video number 23 so when the atom that causes polarity is present inside the molecule the effect that it the polarity that it creates would be permanent and Therefore, inductive effect is an example of a permanent polarization effect. It is a permanent polarization effect because the atom that is present inside the molecule is causing the polarity and it is not going anywhere. Therefore, it is going to stay polar. So it is a permanent effect. You must remember that. Now that you have understood inductive effect, there are two solved examples in your textbook that I'd like to discuss here so that this concept becomes clear to you. Which bond is more polar in the following pairs of molecules? 
For inductive effect to take place, the first condition is that there should be a polarity in the bond. The two atoms should be should have an electronegativity difference. So we must know which one is more electronegative and which one is lesser electronegative. So which bond is more polar in the following pairs of molecules? Here you have the bond is between CH3 and H, carbon and hydrogen. And here it is CH3 carbon and bromine. So between hydrogen and bromine, which is more electronegative? Bromine is more electronegative. So the electronegativity difference between carbon and bromine would be greater, right? In comparison to the electronegativity difference between carbon and hydrogen. Here you have the bond is between in B, it is the CH3 and H2. The bond is between carbon and nitrogen. And here you have CH3, OH. So CH3 is the same, hydrogens are the same. Here you have CN and here you have CO. Out of nitrogen and oxygen, which is more electronegative? Oxygen is more electronegative, therefore CH3, OH will be more polar. The greater the electronegativity difference, the more polar is the bond. Again, you have CH3OH and CH3SH out of sulfur and oxygen, which is more electronegative. Oxygen is more electronegative. Therefore, again, CH3OH in this case would be more electro, would be more polar. Now, this is question 12.15. In which carbon-carbon bond of this molecule, the inductive effect is expected to be the least? Inductive effect is most in the first bond, right? The bond adjacent to this. As it goes on till the third bond, the inductive effect really decreases. So, which one would have the least inductive effect here? This will have the highest. This is second carbon and this is third carbon. This would have the least inductive effect. Which carbon carbon bond? The carbon bond between these two. The further away it is from the uh, from the uh, what species which is causing the polarity the more distant it is the lesser is the inductive effect the closer it is to the alpha carbon the more is the inductive effect so the carbon the, if this is carbon 1 carbon 2 carbon 3 then the inductive effect would be least between carbon 2 and carbon 3 right so this was inductive effect and with this I'll wrap up today's video. If you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos on chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye bye for now.